So set up your notebook to title those Cornell notes to cause of earthquakes. These are Cornell notes, so these are the ones you make the question on the left. There will be something to draw today, so make room for it, um, but it won't be too much. Um, it's not about drawing pictures and original sentences. It's about a summary and advanced question. So the first one is deformation. Deformation is when rocks are changed in shape because of uh, stress. And there's two ways they can be deformed. They can be deformed what's called in a plastic way and in an elastic way. And I'll show you pictures of this in a minute. Go ahead and catch up. Pause it if you need to. So you remember last time that I showed you on last Wednesday, anticlines and synclines basically is the way the rocks are bent up or down. But sometimes rocks can be bent plastic, like kind of like clay or sedimentary rocks. Because they are much more moldable because they're made of mud and sand, you can bend them, and earthquakes don't really build up along these folds. But sometimes, in elastic deformations, as the rocks are bent, you see this, uh, here's a fault right here. As the rocks are bent to, uh, because of the tectonic forces, sometimes they kind of get stuck, and then they release huge amounts of energy. So here's a good animation showing you this. So you can see that there's a transform, this plate's moving this way, this plate's moving this way and like the whole street's building, and then all of a sudden it releases a huge amount of energy because the rocks are being bent, and then eventually they kind of like release all that energy in what's called an elastic rebound. So again, deformation is when rocks are bent at, out of shape, and then sometimes they give in to a lot of energy release, and sometimes they don't. And I showed you elastic rebound right now. So elastic rebound is when rocks are bent in an elastic way. Let's say metamorphic rocks, they don't like to be bent. They build up a lot of that energy to keep it, and when they release it, they release it in an elastic rebound. It's when rocks are deformed, and then they return to the original shape, and the fault gets bigger, or a fault is created, and then an earthquake is released. For number one, I forgot to give you the question right, what is deformation? Or what are the two forms of deformation? For elastic rebound, make your own question. Alright, let's move on to number three. Pause the video if you need to catch up. There are three types of earthquake faults. And remember, a fault is a break in the tectonic plate. It could be small, it could be big. It's usually smaller than a tectonic boundary. So the first type of uh, tectonic fault, or uh, a fault, is a strike-slip fault. A strike-slip fault is when transform motion causes a block of crust to move sideways. It creates middle to strong earthquakes. Let me show you an image. All right, so here's a strike-slip fault. Let me just push play in this animation. You can see that this is a transform boundary because the earth was moving this way and the other way, this way. And then in a strike slip, it's moving side to side. So when the faulting or the line, the breakage, is a side to side motion or caused by side to side motion, we call that a strike slip fault. Okay, letter B. A normal fault. A normal fault is when divergent motion, like divergent tectonic plate motion, causes a, a block of the crust to move downwards. This creates the weakest kind of earthquakes. Let me show you. So here's a normal fault. Push play on the animation here. So in a normal fault, this tectonic plate is moving that way, this tectonic plate is moving that way, and then the, there's a crack or a break or a fault, and then the land moves downward. This creates earthquakes that are weakest. So underneath, let's say, the Atlantic Ocean, where there's a lot of divergent boundaries, you would see a lot of normal faulting, which is very weak earthquakes. Okay, let's move on to the last kind of fault. The last kind of fault is called a reverse fault, and these are co caused at convergent motion boundaries, so when tectonic plates meet. And then one piece of crust is actually moved upward, and it produces very strong, very deep quakes. Strike slip, like the uh, San Andreas, is also strong, but this is, uh, also tends to be really strong earthquakes, even if it's a very small fault. All right, let me show you what that looks like. So a reverse fault, sometimes known as a thrust fault, is when the land actually moves upward. You see that it's upward because this tectonic plate was being pushed this way. Maybe this one was moving this way. Maybe not that much, but enough to make them move upward so the land would look like there's an upwards. And then there's the fault in the tectonic uh, crust. Okay, so here's back to the up notes. I'm up with a question for three. There's no four, of course, because three is really long. Make a summary and advanced question. Have a great day.